Today we're going to be making a sketchbook cover or a name tag that will eventually go in your sketchbook inspired by Jim Dine. Our subject matter is going to be mediums or art materials. So if I ever ask you what medium are you using, I'm asking you what material are you using to create your artwork? You can also use the word media to ask the same question. This is Jim Dine. He is a pop artist, which means he takes objects from the world around him and makes art about them. So you can see here, there are five different types of brushes. He also does these hearts where he uses playful colors and sectioning. So we're gonna use those kind of ideas to make our art today. What kind of tools and art tools or art media do you see here? I can see scissors. I can see a brush. I can see hammers. I can see wrenches. When you look at these next artworks, what kind of varieties of color do you see? What kind of mark making do you see? Is it messy? Is it intentional? Are some of the marks the same? I want you to be thinking about mark making and tools when we make our project today. So we're gonna make a Jim Dine inspired sketchbook cover. And if you do not have a sketchbook, you can do it on a small piece of paper. This is four and a quarter by five and a quarter. So about the size of a note card would be good. And we can always put this onto a sketchbook later. The first thing we're gonna do is write your name and then everything else will be around your name. So write your name really big. You can use a marker, try to make nice thick lines. If you need to do it with pencil first so you can plan out how it's going to be positioned, that would be good too. So this is for your sketchbook or a folder that you might have. And you wanna make sure we can identify and read your name. Remember your artwork does not have to look exactly like mine. And since we're doing a Jim Dine inspired artwork, it doesn't have to be perfectly neat either. His work was kind of messy and fun. So now we're going to show different art tools or different mediums. So I have some art tools over here for us to look at, and we're going to draw different tools as if they were coming in to the page. So the first one I'm going to draw is a pencil. For a pencil, you need a long rectangle, and I'm gonna do this one coming from the bottom, just straight from the bottom. And what I like to do, instead of a, a straight top across, I like to do a zigzag top. Like when you, um, some pencils, when you sharpen them, they kind of have a zigzaggy kind of line across. Then you need a triangle on top. And then the very tip is going to be dark or color. You could also draw the lines on the pencil to make it look like it has grooves. The next one I'm going to draw is a crayon. I'm gonna have my crayon coming off from the side. It's gonna start the rectangle again. I'm going to, this time, actually close the rectangle with a straight line. And then the crayon has a little bit of a cylinder still of, of the crayon that's the same width as the middle where the paper is. And then it's kind of like a triangle with a flat top. So I'm gonna go in a little bit, go up, and then do a flat top like that. For most crayons, like the Crayola crayons, it has two stripes that has kind of a wiggle line in between. And then for the Crayola symbol or word, there's a little kind of circle around it. I'm not gonna write Crayola because that might be kind of hard. The next one I'm going to draw is a marker. So I'm gonna open this marker. I'm gonna get another marker too so we can look at it. So kind of like the crayon, it has the cylinder part, the part that's gonna be like our rectangle. It has the two stripes with a wiggle in the middle. It has a circle, or sorry, a oval 
Then it has these different levels of plastic. So I'm gonna look at this. There's kind of two levels of plastic. So it goes bump, bump, like that. And then the tip of it is kind of like a triangle, more like a Hershey's Kiss. It has more of a roundness to it. All right, let me snap these marker caps back on. So that way I can use my markers later and they're not dried out. Okay, I have some paint brushes. Now, paint brushes can have all sorts of different um, ways that you can draw them. Um, so I'm gonna do two different paint brushes. One's gonna be flat, kind of rectangular like this at the top, and one's gonna be more like a soft brush, which is more like a kind of droplet. So I'm gonna start with a rectangle. I'm gonna do the metal part where the brush comes from. And for this one, I'm gonna do more of a soft brush. So I'm going to do kind of a... For the next one, for a square brush, it will start similar, rectangular base, the metal part, and then I'm gonna do more of a kind of wide top to the metal part and a rectangle with lines in it to show my flat brush. All right, so the last thing I'm gonna do, hmm, so we have drawing materials, we have painting materials. Um, we would do some sculptural materials. So maybe we could do a glue bottle top. And I don't have one right in front of me, but basically what you're going to do is a wide rectangle, a smaller square, that's like the top of the blue bottle, and then a shape that's kind of like a brush for the glue bottle top. And let's put grooves on it so it looks like it's the kind where you twist it. Now, after you're done, with drawing your materials, you can outline them. I just did them straight and sharpie. But then, like Jim Dine, you can add hearts to it. You can do different colors. Um, have some fun with maybe how you color it in. If you're on our kind of brownish paper here, color pencils and crayons sit the best on them. So if you wanted to use a yellow and push down, it sits a little better than using a yellow um, a yellow marker. So take your time, work on coloring in your coloring materials, maybe giving some line decorations or some hearts around them. It's up to you because this is your sketchbook and I want it to be customized how you would like it to look like.